Uh, Ed Fenster, let's begin with you. Mm -hmm. um, after 30 years of development, lots of growth, solar still only accounts for about half a percent of all the electricity supply in the United States. So while there's been lots of stories about solar this, solar here, it's still only half a percent. So put solar in the context of the overall energy supply for the United States, then we'll get in the other guys. Sure. So, you know, uh, I think one of the reasons that we're in the business we're in is that our perspective is that, you know, one of the really interesting things about solar is there's a very small minimum efficient scale relative to other forms of energy generation. Uh, the real place that you want to put solar is on a home or on a business, uh, not in a desert. Um, uh, where it has to um, be transported and distributed into a load center at high cost. So it's much more competitive um, when you can put it on a home uh, because it avoids all that transmission distribution expense. A lot so of people the, would think that it's, the desert's a good place because it's always sunny and hot in the desert. Right, but it turns out actually if you were to look at your PG&E bill, um, two-thirds of the cost that you pay is in getting the energy from the power plant to your home. And so by putting a solar system on your home, you're, com you're able to compete not just with the cost of the energy itself, but its delivery. Okay. So uh, one of the reasons that solar has been scaling more slowly um, is that really its use case is on residential homes and on businesses. But the growth rate of those installations is running, you know, particularly for the, I think businesses represented here, you know, 50 to 100 percent, you know, year over year. And you compound that forward, you know, the numbers get big pretty quickly. Um, and so we have only really enjoyed a competitive cost structure, you know, for the last two or three years. But the but if you draw forward the growth rates that we've been experiencing in the past, I think you'll you'll see it, you know, uh, very quickly growing to be, you know, five to ten percent uh, of the of the actual load generation. Lyndon Rive, does that lead to some some hype in the industry? Some people think there's a bubble that that solar's been been hyped. Is there hype in solar? No, no, there's, there's no bubble. Ask any solar manufacturer right now. Well, not on that, not on that <laughs> side, yeah. <laughs> there's no bubble. Yeah. In fact, that bubble's been burst a long time ago. Um, no, it, it's based on pure fundamentals. So you, you sell electricity. That cost of electricity is an NPV, and that determines the value of the system. So there's no bubble here. It is, what is the future cost of electricity? What are you selling it for today? Can you sa uh, save the customer money? If the answer is yes, then the economics will hold. So unless you view that retail rates will decrease in the future, then you may uh, think it's a bubble. But uh, just show of hands, who thinks retail rates are going to go down? <laughs> there one, we go, one, one guy. One person <laughs> out of uh, 150 <laughs> in the audience, OK. So, so it's, uh, you know, if, if the last 100 years is an indication of the future, which is not always the case, then um, retail rates will go up. Danny Kennedy, uh, it always has been the case until recently that people who want to put solar on their own rooftop of their home or business have to put up tens of thousands of dollars to purchase the equipment and install it themselves. And now there's a model where people can basically rent instead of buy. So explain for us that, th that basic model. So that's the key to the kind of fast growth in the residential space, which these three companies are pioneers of the, the solar lease or the power purchase agreement which is the same as you get from the utility. They've built a coal plant in the desert. They took some debt to do that. They repay it through the revenues they earn by selling electricity to consumers. We've created finance structures that allow us to put a power plant on your roof. You get it installed for no money down, and it's paid off through the life of the system. So it's a pay-as-you-go electricity service contract. So these are really solar service businesses, and that's the game we're in. We're service providers of the thing we all know as electricity, which is a really great value. And it's allowed us to grow very quickly. In the last four or five years that that opportunity has existed in the US, we've gone from zero, they were all cash up front systems sold in the States, to now about 70% of the market share being pay as you go on that basis. And, and you know, just to the point previously about the growth curve, again, exponential curves surprise people. It may be less than 1% today, but the rate of doubling is what's important. And, you know, last year, 2012, there was a lot of hype about gas going into the grid. But actually, only 50% of new additions in the country were gas. The other 50% were wind and solar. Solar's coming up from this tiny, minuscule proportion, but 1% goes to 2, goes to 4, goes to 8, to 16 very quickly. And even PG&E and the big utilities will tell you, we'll be 10 or 20% of the grid within the decade. And if we have our way, we'll be more than that. And, and that's very possible. It's a bit reminiscent of the conversation with landline telephone companies a decade ago. You know, they were sitting around fairly complacent going, oh, don't worry about those cell phone things. We've got a similarly disruptive technology governed by the same semiconductor manufacturing process, actually, and we provide a better service for less. 
so we're going to take their lunch. <laughs> we'll see what they have to say about that. Um, yeah, we're here. Go ahead. Marco Kraples, uh not many banks lend in this space. Why do you think that lending to solar is, is good business? Well, just uh, wanted to elaborate on uh, Lyndon's point that this is, this is really economic. Um, you know, we bank um, a lot of agricultural clients that are enormous users of electricity. And in the last 60 years, they've seen their rate go from 3 cents per kilowatt hour to 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And even if you adjust it for inflation, uh, rates are still significantly higher. So, you know, commercial clients are thinking, wait a minute, can, is there a way for me to hedge myself against future energy price increases? Because I do not want to be held hostage for the next 30 years, particularly those businesses that are family owned. These guys, they want to, you know, put their business on a sustainable future. And that's what solar does. I mean, it's been a great business because we, we financed uh, either uh, through Linden and, uh, and Danny's company, uh, soon uh, probably ads as well. But, um, you know, we also finance directly our clients that, uh, that are acquiring solar. And what these guys are basically doing is they're owning solar as a future hedge against energy price increases. And they're effectively fixing their energy costs for the life of the system, which is about 30 years. It makes perfect business sense. And that's why we've seen uh, virtually zero default rates. And a lot of your clients are Republican, conservative, right? They're yeah, we bank agricultural clients. I mean, these guys, I, mean, I tell you, one, one of these, these guys that I approached three, four years ago is a dairy farmer in Hanford, uh, California. Uh, Mike Montero, I said, Mike, you said, because I looked at his, you know, we looked at his cost statement and, you know, we looked, at, we, we were, we, we basically had his interest rates with a derivative. And then we said, wait a minute, we should be looking at his energy costs because his energy costs are significantly higher than what he was actually paying on interest to get on, on to the bank. So he said, well, can I do something about that? Because I would love to. I said, absolutely. And so this guy now has a one megawatt uh, solar farm next to his dairy farm, powering his entire dairy farm. Dairy farms are huge. Uh, users of energy because of the movement of water and they use a lot of water and so um, yeah, we've seen our, our clients particularly in the, in the valley that are predominantly Republican indeed as you say uh, being uh, huge adapters of, of, of solar uh, because it makes business sense. They always tell me Marco we like the green that you guys think about in San Francisco but the kind of green that we really care about is the green that ends up in my pocket and it turns out they can have both.